Hi. Mike Enslin. Checking in. Honey? Mr. Enslin, we were afraid you weren't going to show. Oh, oh it's such an honor to have you here. It's a terrible night out there. I guess get that key, I'll settle in. And we can talk in the morning after. You I probably think. want to hear all about our haunted history. Well, this staircase here, this is where the maid reputedly hung herself in 1860. Uh, there's a picture. Can we do this in the morning? Wait, wait, it's printed in our brochure. Now, did we send you one of these? Uh, probably did. Do you see her in the window? Yeah, there she is. That's a photo that a guest took in 1986. In your letter, you mentioned that the rooms with the most paranormal activity were in the attic. Could I have one of those rooms? That's right, because the attic is on the third floor, which is the former servants' quarters. People say that all of Sylvia's children died up there of tuberculosis. All of them. Guests have reported strange sounds. At the stroke of midnight, there's been weird noises. Now, our best advice is to lock your door from the inside. Isn't that right, honey? That's right. You take care, you just lock it from the inside. I will. As soon as you give me the key. <laughs> oh, left right. Got it right here. Number 14, you can't it's miss been it. been a long drive. Good luck. All right, we'll see what the uh, night brings. Mrs. Clark, the proprietor, says she hasn't slept a night since acquiring the inn, and I believe her. No, 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 no. I pity her. But in any case, the eggs better are delicious. And if you call in advance, Mrs. Clark says she will bake her famous flourless chocolate cake. On a shiver scale, I award the Weeping Beach Inn six calls. Screw five skulls. <laughs> event. All right. Cool. I'm Mike Enslin. Sorry? Book signing. All right. Oh, that's you. Yeah. I see the resemblance. Yeah. That's a good yeah. picture. Thanks, man. All right. Hold on. Um, attention, um, book lovers. Uh, tonight we have uh, noted a cult writer, um, Michael Enslin, at the uh, author's corner tonight. Is the writer of best-selling ghost survival guides um, with such titles as um, 10 Haunted Hotels, uh, 10 Haunted Graveyards, uh, 10 Haunted Lighthouses. Well, that's tonight, 7 p.m. Anyway, so I really enjoyed writing it, and uh, that's kind of a history of the book, and I um, hope you enjoy it or enjoyed it. Uh, you know, stay scared, right? Any questions? Where's the scariest place you've ever been? Scariest place I've ever been. Uh, I've never heard that question before. That's a joke. <laughs> well, all these places have very colorful histories. Um, I would say if I had to pick a top one, I would say Bar Harbor, the site of the Grizzly McTeague wedding night murders. That's an intense place. Or maybe St. Cloud, Minnesota, where the crazed war widow threw her baby down a well. I mean, those all have a lot of, I mean, it's thick. The air is thick. What about poltergeists? Look, I'm a good researcher. I go into every gig locked and loaded. I travel on the EMF meter, full range spectrometer, infrared camera. I mean, look, nothing would make me happier than to experience a paranormal event, you know, to get a glimpse of that elusive light at the end of the tunnel. So you're saying there's no such thing as ghosts? 
I'm saying I've never seen one, but they're awfully convenient for desperate hotels when the interstate moves away. Uh, this thing is really going off the rails. Who has a pen? I do. Which one? Uh, but seriously, Mike, if I want to see a real-life ghost, um, where's my best bet? Guaranteed? Yeah. Haunted Mansion, Orlando. Awesome. Thanks. Stay scared. Thank you. Hey, Ray, can you lock up? Holy shit. What rock did you find that under? Um, eBay. eBay. <laughs> How much did it go for? Well, there weren't many bidders. I would think not. <laughs> wow. But it's, um, an amazing book. Oh. Um, so unique and inspirational and honest. Thanks. What's your name? Um, Anna. Okay, Anna. Are you gonna write another one like this one? No, nah, it's a different guy. Um, can I ask you a question? Sure. Um, the relationship in the, the book with the father and the son, it's probably too personal, but um, it's so authentic and mm -hmm. well-constructed, and is it true? No. Well, thank you for this, I really appreciate it. My pleasure. Okay, buddy? Hey, are you breathing? <laughs> what do you got? 325. That is back here, I think. Uh-huh. This is the one. Sign on the line, please, sir. Right. Sure. Have yourself a beautiful day. Okay. Hey, man. You've been gone a while. Hey, Jackson, what's up? Oh, by the way, dude, I read your last book. Oh, okay. The Ten Haunted Mansions thing? Now, that's some scary shit. Cool. You're good. Later on, dude. Cute. Good evening, Dolphin Hotel. How might I direct your call? Yeah, hi, I'm calling about room 1408. One moment, please, sir. How may I help you? Yeah, I'd like to stay in room 1408, please. That room is unavailable, sir. I didn't tell you which date. 
How about Saturday? It's unavailable. <laughs> Following Tuesday. Unavailable. Next month. Unavailable. Next summer. I gotta have lunch with that idiot from Random House. Anybody? Sam, Mike Enzen calling from Los Angeles again. Oh, I'll take it in there. Clay, you gotta set for Mike Enzel and say yes. Uh, yes. Okay. Now look, this guy tends to get a little more rose, so try to keep the energy up, otherwise he stews in his own funk. Mike! Hey, Sam. Hey, read the first five chapters last night. Spooky shit. Couldn't sleep a wink. Great. Hey, did you take care of that thing? Oh, you better believe I didn't. I got our top lawyer here right now, Mike Clay. Clay, Mike. Hi, Clay. Mike. Talk faster, right? This guy's 400 bucks an hour. All right, Clay, what's up with the dolphin? Yeah, the dolphin, that stick up its ass relic on Lexington. Too posh for a free plug, right? Well, you are gonna love what Clay's cooked up. He dug around and found you, are you sitting down? A federal civil rights law. Like somebody would discriminate against you, well-to-do white guy. But the law is the law, right, Clay? Ergo, if the room's not occupied, they have to give it to you. Really? Yeah. Now, look, the manager there is going to put up a stink, but he knows the drill. Nothing you can't handle. So, Mike, we'll book the room, and if they refuse, we'll rattle our sabers and file suit. So it's all done. Thanks, Clay. Get lost, all right? Bye, Clay. Yeah, Mike. You there? Yeah. Uh, on a more personal note, are you sure you want to come here? Yeah, of course. It'll make a solid closing chapter of the book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know the routine, but, I mean, it's New York. All that happened. You really want to put yourself through that? I'll be quick. Are you going to call Lily? No, I don't want to impose. In and out, nobody gets hurt. It's just a job. Fabulous. Pardon me, ladies. Uh, so, if there's anything we can do to help you, just let me know. Excited to see you, of course. Oh, <laughs> Thanks very much. Welcome to the Dolphin, sir. Are you checking in? Mike Enslin, one night. And how are we spelling that today? N S L I N. Would you excuse me for a moment, sir? Sure. Yes, ma'am. Mr. Dempsey, Mike Emsland's just checked in. Where is he? Uh, he's over at my desk. That's fine, Marie. I'll take care of it. Okay. Now, can you just sit here for a minute? Certainly, certainly. Oh, sure. Yes. It'll just be a minute, Mr. Enslin. Good evening, sir. Can I help you with your bag? No. Very well. Mr. Enslin. Gerald Olin, manager of the Dolphin. If there's anything that I can do for you while you're here, uh, dinner reservations, theater tickets, maybe a Knicks game, anything, just tell me I am at your service. Well, if I can just get the key to 1408, I can get out of your hair. Oh, we were thinking of upgrading you to a penthouse suite. 1408, please. Insist on our could you please um, humor me by coming to my office for a more private conversation? Sure. Next. Come in. Make yourself comfortable. 1408, a smoking room? As a matter of fact, it is. Yes. Good. One less worry in the watches of the night. Care for a cigar? 
No, thank you. I don't smoke. Oh, this, yeah, that's uh, in case nuclear war breaks out. I, I gave it up a long time ago. It's part habit, part superstition. It's an old writer thing. You do drink, don't you? Of course. I just said I was a writer. The second sip, this say, 1939, exquisite. About 800 a bottle when you can find it. I appreciate the bribe, but I intend on staying in that room. How long? How long? My usual's overnight. Oh, I see. No one's ever lasted more than an hour. <laughs> Jesus, man. You ought to shave your eyebrows and paint your hair gold if you're going to try to sell that spook house bullshit. Otherwise, you'll scare the children. Why are you mocking me when I am genuinely, to the best of my ability, trying to help you? No, you're playing a little game. You're selling the mystique. But eventually, we both know you're going to give me the key, and I'm going to go up to the room, and I'm going to write my story, and your bookings are going to go up 50 percent. Do you mind if my little friend records our conversation? I'll take that as yes. Sir, you quite misunderstand the situation. Now, I know the Dolphin doesn't have the cachet of the Plaza or the Carlisle, but we operate at 90 percent capacity, always. And my concern here is not for the hotel. My concern here is not for you. Frankly, selfishly, I don't want you to check into 1408 because I don't want to clean up the mess. Now, hotels are all about presentation and fertile creature comforts. My training is as a manager, not a coroner. Under my watch, there have been four deaths. Four. After the last one, I forbade any guests from checking into 1408 ever again. The last one was David Hyde, orthodontist, manic depressive, slit his wrist, did a little self-surgery, turned himself into a eunuch, right? Yes. So you've done your homework. I'm a professional, too. Well, grievously, in its 95-year existence, the hotel has seen seven jumpers, four overdoses, five hangings, three, three mutilations. mutilations. Two stranglings. General Manager Gerald Olin is well-versed in the hotel's tragic history, dryly reciting the docket of carnage like a bookkeeper discussing his ledger. Wow. You think you're clever, don't you? I know the game. Well, during your investigation, did you discover the 22 natural deaths that have occurred in 1408? Natural deaths? Ah. Didn't find out about them because the newspapers don't print anything about them. <laughs> All told, there have been 56 deaths in 1408. 56? You're shitting me. You don't know anything. The causes of death in 1408 range from heart attack, stroke, drowning. Drowning? Yes, one Mr. Grady Miller drowned in his chicken soup. That's hard to do. How, how did he do that? How indeed. Interesting. And it's all in here. I will let you have this and give you access to my office. You can take notes, put it all in your book. My only condition is that you do not stay in that room. You let me look at all that stuff? Hmm. I never did get that drink. Keep it. Compliments of the house. I'm still staying. Damn it to hell! I'm sorry. All right, here. Here. Read the godforsaken thing. I guarantee you, once you've read it, you won't want to stay in 1408. The first victim, Mr. Kevin O'Malley. Sewing machine salesman. Checked into the hotel the first week it opened, October 1912. Cut his own throat, right? Oh, that's not the horrific part. Afterwards, in a fit of insanity, he tried to stitch himself back together using an old sewing needle before he bled to death. Easy, man. Look, Mr. Entlin, you don't have to stay in 1408. You can take photographs of 1404. It has the exact same layout, and no one will ever know the difference. My readers expect the truth. Your readers. Your readers expect grotesqueries and uh, cheap thrills. 
The headless ghost of Mr. Eugene Rilsby still walks its abandoned farmhouse, the barking phantom of Mount Hope Cemetery. Direct quote. How'd you know that? Your books aren't hard to find. They're on the bargain shelves of any paper bag novel store. <laughs> Full of cynicism written by a talented, intelligent man who doesn't believe in anything or anyone but himself. Guilty as charged. Hey, listen, this meeting's over. Why don't you give me the room? Oh, please, don't act like a hurt schoolgirl. In fact, you surprised me. Oh. You are not the hack and slash I expected. I rather liked the first one, the hardcover. Well, what was it called? Uh, the Last Walk. Long Road Home. The Long Road Home, yes. I rather thought the father was a bastard. Yeah, he was. Um, look, man, just give me the key. Mr. Inslee. Just give me the key. Listen, I stayed at the Bigsby house. I brushed my goddamn teeth right next to the tub where Sir David Smith drowned his whole family. And I stopped being afraid of vampires when I was 12. Do you know why I can stay in your spooky old room, Mr. Olin? Because I know that ghoulies and ghosties and long-legged beasties don't exist. Even if they did, there's no God to protect us from them, is there? I can't talk you out of this. I think we've reached an understanding. Very well. Come with me. Most hotels have switched to magnetics. An actual key. That's a nice touch. It's antique. We have magnetic cards also, but electronics don't seem to work in 1408. Hope you don't have a pacemaker. General manager claims that the phantom in room interferes. I have never used the word phantom. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, spirit, specter? No, you misunderstand. But whatever's in 1408 is nothing like that. Then what is it? It's an evil fucking room. Mr. Oline, pouvez-vous lire et signer le papier, s'il vous plaît? Ah, oui. C'est bien. Why don't the owners just close the room? The Usodo Corporation prefers to pretend there's no problem, just as they pretend there's no 13th floor. The room has got to be filthy. I mean, the sheets haven't been changed in, what, 11 years? No, no, no. We're very professional. 1408 gets a light turn once a month. I supervise the maids work in pairs. We treat the room as if it's a chamber filled with poison gas. We only stay 10 minutes, and I insist the door remain open. But still. A few years ago, a young maid from El Salvador found herself locked in the bathroom. She was only there for a few moments, but when we pulled her out, she was... She's dead. No, blind. She'd taken a pair of scissors and gouged her eyes out. She was laughing at Stark. Your floor. Well, this is where we part company. This is as close as I get to 1408, unless it's that time of the month. See you tomorrow. Mr. Insulin, please don't do this. I'll call you about those next tickets.
This is it. You gotta be kidding me. Round one goes to the hideous Mr. Olin for effective aggressiveness. I have to admit he had me going for a moment. But where is the bone-chilling terror? Show me the rivers of blood. It's just a room. dollars for pure nuts. This room is evil. Owen said hotels are about fertile creature comforts. It's a good line, but I wonder whether they're really about reassuring platitudes, prosaic sense of the familiar. Yes, I've been here before. It's safe. There's a sofa, a writing desk, a faux antique armoire, Floral wallpaper. Carpet's unremarkable, except for a stain beneath a thrift store painting of a schooner lost at sea. The work is done in the predictably dull fashion of Courier and Ives. The second painting is of an old woman reading bedtime stories, Whistler knockoff, to a group of deranged children as another Madonna and child watch from the background. It does have the vague air of menace. The third and final painfully dull painting is the ever popular The Hunt, horses, hounds, and constipated British lords. Some smart ass spoke about the banality of evil. If that's true, then we're in the seventh circle of hell. It does have its charms. The panorama is typically cramped New York City view of nothing. Dull, gray buildings all around, honking traffic below, the view of a mortality. The wounded oh. has begun to leave. White lace and promises. A kiss for like and we're on our that offers turn-down service. <laughs> All right. All right, let's Encyclopedia Brown, this bitch. Start off the window. Hear the music, knock my head. I turn around over the bed for the chocolate, and I go into the closet, which would have, my back was turned, would have let Houdini have time to come in here, do the paper trick, and is in the living room.
You're gonna have to try harder, asshole! Nice and warm for you up there! It's hot down here, Bubba. Hello, this is Mike Enslin. Guess which room? Good evening, sir. Good evening. Are you ready to check out? Check out? No, 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 no. Check out, check out. No, why would I check out? Especially with this wonderful maid service. It's so discreet. No, no, no. I need you to send somebody to fix my thermostat. Room's on fire. Of course, sir. We'll send an engineer right up. You will? Absolutely. Thank you. How many thin walls have we put up with together? Oh, boy. How many sarcophagal chambers? Hotel rooms are a naturally creepy place. Don't you think? I mean, how many people have slept in that bed before you? How many of them were sick? How many of them lost their minds? How many of them died? We came here to get the story, and we don't rattle, do we? It's not what I'm seeing. It's not real. It just ain't as real as it seems. Hello? You got a problem with the temperature? Too hot or too cold? What does it look like? Come on in. The box is right over here. It's stuck around 80. It said the box is right here. I know where the hell it is, but I ain't going in this room. You just have to walk six or seven feet. I said I ain't going in. You know what happened in here? Yes, I'm well aware of that. Look, I'll talk you through it. Any jackass can fix that thing. Just remove the panel. Okay, now, above that coil is a little tube filled with mercury. That's supposed to activate the contact switch. 
But this hotel's so goddamn old, half the shit in here don't work. I just give the tube a little tap. Just tap the damn thing. Yeah, there it is. Oh, sir, you're a genius, a gentleman, and a scholar. Thank you. Let me give a tip. Sir? What sandwich? I didn't order any sandwich. What are you talking about? I'm sorry. You're welcome to substitute a side dish for your french fries. We have cottage cheese, macaroni salad... Listen to me. Sauce. You win. I'm checking out. I'm hurt. Do you understand? My goddamn hand is hurt. I understand. If you leave your dry cleaning out by 10 a.m., we'll have express and return by 5 Shit, bitch! Call me a cab to the nearest hospital! I'm hurt! Do you comprehend what I'm telling you? Sir, I will not tolerate you speaking to me in that tone of voice. You're an idiot! I'm gonna sue your ass! I'm gonna take legal action! What's wrong with you? If you wish, I can connect you with our manager, Mr. Olin. Good! Good, 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 good! Put him on! Put him on! I'm gonna blitz the son of a bitch! Olin, good! Put him on now! <sighs> when staying at the Dolphin, be certain to enjoy New York's finest dining at the fabled Seabring restaurant on our mezzanine level. Muscles tense? Then make an appointment to visit our deluxe spa on the coral level. With full massage, uh. facial, and aromatherapy facilities, it will leave you feeling relaxed Hello? and revitalized. Your call is important to us. You win. All right. Okay. Come. Come. Come on.
What is that? Is that a spy cam? Who is that? You enjoying this? Is that the sadistic owner of the hotel? Or is that Olin? Wait a minute. He gave me booze. He gave me booze. Did he take a sip? I can't remember. <laughs> he dosed me. It was the booze. Booze worth of chocolate. Strangers. All right. All right. I'm just hallucinating. I'm just hallucinating. I just gotta ride this out. I gotta ride this out. Five hours and I'm straight. Okay. You are finished. Come here. Come here. We're done. You want me to sit down? All right. You want me to sit down?
Ma'am, can you hear me? Ma'am, I need your help. Please, ma'am, can you hear me? Kid, be quiet. Please, ma'am. Be quiet. Dead. Where is my garden? I can't smell anything. I hate this place. How did I get here? I'm not real. Maybe I'm just having a nightmare. An incredibly vivid, lucid nightmare. When is the last time I remember going to bed? Flew in yesterday. What is that? Today? I can't remember. Was I on a train? I woke up somewhere and I had breakfast. Where was I? What did I eat?
Something should happen. Ash, slip and fall. I want it to be known that it was an accident. Rome did not win. Okay, okay we'll do this. Eighteen little steps. Keep moving.
me a signal. Give me a signal. Good evening, Mike. <gasps> yes. Mike. Mike, is that is that you? I can barely see you. Yes. Yes. It's like seeing a ghost. No, no, no. Yes, it's me. It's me. It's Mike. This is a little bizarre. I mean, I talk to you in here, and suddenly you pop up in a box on my computer. I'm sorry, Lily. Listen to me, please, quickly. Look, I'm at work, okay? So why no, don't you call no, me listen, home tonight? I'm trapped in this room, this place. Mike, you're always trapped in weird places. That's your job. No, no, no. Please, Lily, listen to me. Please. Lily Anson. Hi. Lily. Yeah, yeah, I've got those. I'll be right down. No. Lily. Okay, uh, Lily, yeah. please call the cops. Send them to the Dolphin Hotel. I'll call you back. You're in the city? Yes. 2254 Lexington. What are you doing in New York? I'll tell you later. The Dolphin Hotel, room 1408. That's just Please. Do you walk out, you disappear. Leaving me what? Not divorced, separated? I don't know. It's not clear. And suddenly Lily, you leave me? I'm in a real bad spot here. I'm in danger. Okay, you Mike. Understand? Slow down. You're not making any sense. There's something trying to kill me mm. right now. <laughs> no, Lily! Got a knife! Good to be back. Uh. That's enough of that. Alcohol. I was just checking to see if the accommodations are exceeding your expectations. You know goddamn well they are. What do you want from me? No, no, no. What do you want? What do you want, Mr. Enslin? You sought this room. It was a job. I was doing the job. I beg your pardon. My job. I'm a writer. Oh, that's right. You don't believe in anything. You like shattering people's hopes. Oh, that's bullshit. Why do you think people believe in ghosts? For fun? No. It's the prospect of something after death. How many spirits 
have you broken? So much pain. What do you want from me? Huh? What do you want from me? You. I want my drink! You win. You win. Mommy, hmm. why is the Bible purple? <laughs> I don't know why it's purple. It's a wedding present. My grandmother brought it all the way from Hungary. Someday it'll be yours. There are people where I'm going. Hey, you're not going anywhere, kiddo. You're gonna stay right here with us. Daddy. Everyone dies. When they're old. When they're much older. Okay, and then they go to a better place. And it's beautiful there. And all your friends will be there. Is God there? Yes. Do you really believe that, Daddy? Yes. You know what I think. We should have done more! We did everything no, we could. No, we didn't. We should have helped her fight. Oh, my God. Instead of filling her head full of these stories about heavens and the clouds and nirvana and all that. Oh, stories she liked. I'm going to get some cigarettes, OK? Orpheus on the Orpheum circuit. Bathe and dying go light. The kind of light that makes the dead. Get out of their graves and tango. And this is level nine. Hmm. Deepest level of hell. For this remove from all light and warmth. This is six. Scott team five. I think I see the pattern. Yes, I, I can see the pattern. Mike. Mike, can you hear me? Mike, do you have a party? Really?
myself in this climate. Calm down. Hey, we'll figure this out. Don't panic, I'm okay? supposed to die. Here. Michael, stop it. You're not gonna die, okay? Don't move. I can be there in 15 minutes. Okay, buddy? Hey, are you breathing? Come on, talk to me. You got a few minutes? Hey. How are you feeling? Am I out? You're okay, you're okay, you're okay. You're okay. Wait, wait, lie down, lie down, lie down. Lie down, lie down, lie down. You're okay. You're in the hospital. Hospital where? In New York? New York? No, no, you're in L.A. Got hit on the head with your board. I can't believe you still surf. You flew here just for me? Yeah. Yeah, I was, um, I was worried they called. I think I'm still listed as your next of kin. Okay, I'm not in New York. Why do you keep saying that? I 
I was in New York. I was trapped in New York. I was dying in this Kafkaesque hotel. The Dolphin. What? The Dolphin Hotel on 45th and Lex. I spoke with 45th you there. 45th and Lex. I called you. I've never heard of it. You're gonna be okay. You just need to rest. Clear. I think in the dream, the room is your subconscious, and it brought up a lot of stuff. That's a good thing for you. But this was, I mean, I was down the rabbit hole. I mean, I was rattled. I was shook up. I mean, I can't shake it. I think after dinner, you should drive me back to the hospital, check me in a psych unit. <laughs> you look really great. I can't believe I'm sitting here with you. Tell me about it. Is everything all right? Can I get you anything else? Um, I'll have another glass of wine, please. The same. Mike? Yeah, I'll have another uh, tequila, a uh, Patron chilled double. Right back. Katie was there. Hmm. Can you imagine? What it feels like, you know, to have the sensation. I mean, the very real sensation that I talked to her like two days ago. Talked to her, saw her, touched her. Yeah. I see her every night when I shut my eyes. Yeah, but it was so vivid. It was so real. Maybe you should write about it. About Katie? Shit. You always wore it tougher than me. Why not? Seriously, it sounds like you're ready to deal with this stuff. Can you stay? <sighs> I'm sorry. Package I need overnight. Is this the right form? I gotta get this to New York by tomorrow morning. I'm sorry, sir, but we're closed.
need help. Please. You're not real. I'm cold. You're not Katie. I'm so cold. you, Daddy. Don't you love me anymore? Of course I do, sweetheart. There we go. I got you now. <laughs> I got you now, okay? Oh, my God. They won't let me stay. Yes, they will. They won't let me stay. What? They won't let me stay. No, no, no. Nobody's ever going to take you away again. I got you. You love me, Daddy. Of course I do. I love you more than anything in the world. I wish we could stay together. You, me, and Mom. <laughs> we can. We can. We can. I got you right here. I got you right here, sweetie. Everything's fine. Everything's so fine. You bastard. <laughs> Why don't you just kill me? Because all guests of this hotel enjoy free will, Mr. Enslin. You can choose to relive this hour over and over, or you can take advantage of our express checkout system.
Are you ready to check out, Mr. Enslin? No. Not your way. I understand. By the way, Mr. Enslin, your wife just called. She'll be here in five minutes and we'll send her straight up. She's not involved. You can't have her. I'm done arguing with you. I'm gonna end this. Five. This is five. Ignore the siren. Even if you leave this room, you can never leave this room. Eight. This is eight. We have killed your friends. Every friend is now dead. I've lived the life of a selfish man. But I don't have to die that way. If I'm going down, I'm taking you with me. This may not all be real, and I may not even be real, but this fire... That's gotta be real. It might take a while. Something must have happened. Katie wasn't there. You're in the hospital. 
hospital in New York. Yeah, don't you remember? The fire? I was just checking. They think, um, they said they think it was old wiring started it. Wiring? Yeah, but you're gonna be okay. Just need to rest. Are you really here with me right now? That day, Lily saved my life, and the dolphin is closed, at least for now. Believe what you want. All I know is, no more ghost stories. I've checked out. Remember you ever writing that fast? It's easy, I already wrote this book. Really smells like smoke. Let me toss it. Let me see. Come on, hon. Just brings back bad memories. Let me get rid of it. Sometimes you can't get rid of bad memories. You just gotta live with them. We'll check the rest here. Don't you love me anymore? Of course I do, sweetheart. I wish we could stay together. <laughs> 